Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the world's most watched professional wrestling news program. Welcome to the Pro Wrestling Report. Damian Nelson sitting alongside the man they call Meathead. Megaphone head. With two seconds to spare. How you doing? And this is the Pro Wrestling Report for December 15th. 2006. Thanks for joining us on television in Milwaukee and all over the world on the World Wide Web on PWRShow.com. Meathead? That's me. Coming off the heels of last week's Blizzard Brawl, the single oh, biggest independent wrestling event. I just got my voice back. Of the you? year. All across the country, over 1,200 fans showing up for Blizzard Brawl, making it the biggest in the country for the year. And uh, we'll be bringing you exclusive footage online <laughs> wow. uh, about uh, from that show. Uh, coming up for the next couple of days. But today, let's talk about our top story. I didn't read your notes yet, so. Top story this week is similar to last week's top story. Several ECW departures are rumored. We talked about Big Show and Paul Heyman being gone last week. That is fact. However, there are rumors that another key player in ECW might be looking for a way Can out. I guess? Can I just throw a name out there? He's got three initials. One is an R. Second one is a V. Third one is a D. That is correct. The rumor hey! is that RVD Booyah! Rob Van Dam is seeming is not happy with his current status in WWE slash ECW and might be looking to when his contract expires in the next few months to go over to TNA. Wow. And you know what? I honestly that's a true one hundred percent guess. And Rob Van Dam, if he were to be able to get away from the company and go over to TNA, ho oh, oh, ho oh. Would he be the biggest acquisition in the history of TNA, as mm. Christian Cage was, as Kurt Angle was? He would be the next biggest acquisition in the history of TNA. Would he be the next big thing? He, would, uh, he wouldn't be the next big thing. That guy's over in Japan somewhere. In the meantime, the rumor is that Bobby Lashley and RVD might have a bit of a program coming up uh, to lead into the next couple of months of ECW TV. Now the problem there is, who's the bad guy? The heel, if you will. Rumor was that Bobby Lashley was going to be that person, and as you see, that has not happened. Can these two, Bobby Lashley the face and RVD the face, put on a good program? You can't make RVD a heel. You, you can't, because you know what? You guys He's watching, one of a kind. us watching, we don't want him to be a heel, and that's just how it's going to be. You tried to make a Goldberg heel. You tried to make an Austin heel. What? Uh, it didn't work. What? You know what? It was it was very amusing TV. You ever have an eyelash hanging right out of your eyebrow and it's just hanging right over your eye? Okay. <laughs> you could have, you know, these guys pretend to be heel and run in on the good guys, but you know what? The fans aren't buying it. So I don't think they could put together a good program. Plus, you've got RVD who's got so many different styles, but you know what? One of his styles isn't power wrestling. It's true. RVD's been around for a great number of years, and it's understandable if he is indeed unhappy in WWE, especially with the current state of ECW coming off the heels of the December to December pay-per-view. Quite possibly one of the worst pay-per-views that uh, has ever been put out by WWE. Worse than the final pay-per-views of WCW? No, those were still watchable because, you know what, they had great matches in them. The stories were junk, and, you know, you could feel the stink in the arena. But, you know what, those were watchable. I mean, we were at WCW Mayhem. That was fun, was it not? It was about half as fun as Over the Edge. Maybe because they had half the people there. Ha <laughs> ha! But you wouldn't have been able to tell by watching it on camera because they cleared out the hard camera side. Who else is going over to TNA? The rumors are rampant and two big names have been mentioned or are being thought about. The first of which is a man who many say is being pushed out of ECW slash WWE at this point in time, a man who has already been a part of the TNA environment, and his name is Sabu. He'd fit right back in. There's a spot for Sabu. Unfortunately, again, Sabu can't talk. Don't put a mic in front of him. My let name him, is Sabu. Let him wrestle. That's and it. the other, and this is completely from left field, pure speculation, but Tommy Dreamer. I thought Tommy Dreamer as well, but Tommy Dreamer is a pure ECW guy. He's also a WWE guy, and when there was no ECW after Tommy was done, he was a producer for WWE. He's a company guy, but you know what? If there's a spot for him, and Tommy, we talk about, and Tommy talks about, he likes to call himself the innovator of violence, and we like to talk about how much abuse this man's body has taken. It's all a sell. I mean, he's got, he's, you know, 17 herniated discs and it's, blah, it's all, blah, 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 blah. It's all blah. a sell. The guy can still work in the ring. With those three names we've talked about, RVD, Sabu, and Tommy Dreamer, Meathead, how would they play in the TNA environment? Now, many say TNA is the new ECW. 
Much like pink is the new black? That's what I'm hearing from the um, Hard Foundation. How would they play in the TNA environment if TNA getting a bit too crowded at that point as they well, already have a it, ton of wrestlers? It's crowded right now. I really do. And it's a lot of top-level guys, too, that you don't have spots for yet. On a one-hour program, which at this point is slated to remain one-hour program, that being Impact and monthly pay-per-views, which will go solidly three hours, but uh, they do still air TNA Explosion in some markets, which is their syndicated program. Uh, not much play coming from that, but potentially with an expansion to two hours on Spike TV. And perhaps this is what they need to honor or to justify that expansion to two hours. Don't know. But I think RVD would be a significant player in oh, TNA. Because instantly. Because you've picture. only seen him in ECW and WWE. Instant. Instant title picture right away. Just like Christian Cage came in, title picture. Just Imagine like you take Jay Lethal and AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels and Chris Saban and Sanjay Dutt and you roll all RVD into that mix, that being the X Division. What an amazing RVD, I don't situation. Think he'd go to the X Division oh, instantly. I, I instantly. Think he would. Not instantly. He may work. You think Kevin Nash again. wouldn't approve it? Uh, Kevin Nash, the doctor and the uh, elder statesman, because he's looking pretty old right about now. I mean, literally, his gr gray is turned white. I think RVD has a great spot, a great potential spot in the X Division. I don't see anywhere else where he'd really fit in. That is the top story, folks. Uh, we are interested to hear your thoughts and views on the uh, potential of Rob Van Dam going to EC, uh, TNA. Notice how I almost called it ECW. Going to TNA. Send your comments on over to mail at pwrshow.com. We'll have those responses next week right here on this very program. You know it would be a great spot right now is to actually bring back another company so there was room for these WWE guys that don't have room in TNA. Smoky Mountain Wrestling? No. WCW. This would be the perfect time. Where, why, and how? Somebody. And Where, why, and how? Just for those three letters? Just for World Championship Wrestling? Just for Tony Schiavone? I want it placed back the way it was. Tony give me, Schiavone. Give, <laughs> There's his maneuver. <laughs> give me <sighs> WCW circa uh, 97 through 2000. 99, because that was about how, how long their, their big run was. Oh, yeah, but I still enjoyed 2000. 2001 was kind of painful. Let's go into the news and views segment, ladies and gentlemen. The news and views for this week. There is a lot of talk about the potential match lineup for WrestleMania 23, which is just a mere four months away. Coming to you from Detroit's Ford Field. Tickets are still available. You can visit Ticketmaster.com to get tickets for that show. Uh, an anticipated 70 to 80,000 fans will fill the Ford Field um, to participate. Say that again. I almost couldn't say it the first time. To participate in what is the grandest spectacle of them all, WrestleMania, no matter which way you look at it. Now, we have talked about it on this program, but now there are more rampant rumors that Big Show will return to the ring to go up against Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Big Show on that list of names of people who is also rumored to be considering going to TNA. I think it's more talk than it is actually something that's being put together. Um, the Big Show Hogan match, do you really want to see it? Pay homage to 20 years ago, WrestleMania three in the Pontiac Silverdome in you know just outside really, of Detroit, You know what I'd really Michigan. like to see, and I don't think it's going to happen, but I think this would be the WrestleMania to actually get Rock to come and do a match. And I think a rock cena a Rock Orton match, even though we already You've had stumbled we've across already, a great potential. We've already had Rock Orton because it was Rock and Foley versus Orton and um, Flair, mm -hmm. I believe. Something but like a, that. A, a Rock Cena match would be great. A Cena Hogan match. Those uh, are great. Those are, are matches endless. right there that are uh, WrestleMania quality. So you have no desire to see Hogan show? No, absolutely not. Show I is saw out it in WCW. It was called Hogan Giant. Show is out indefinitely. He's got an ulcer, actually, that was recently found that will need surgical repair. There are a lot of people speculating that in order to get Big Show to commit to this matchup, it's going to take a lot of financial and uh, persuasion by WWE to get Show back to do it. And also, Hulk Hogan is one of the people who is said to be very uh, firmly behind this idea. You definitely have to milk his ego, whatever you're doing in the company. Now, if he's behind this idea, you won't have to manipulate him as much. But I guarantee you, show does not go over. There's also talk in the main event from the SmackDown side of things, Batista versus The Undertaker, where The Undertaker may suffer his first defeat at WrestleMania at That's the hands talk. of Batista. There is I, talk. It is talk, yes. I don't see that happening either. Batista's not the guy you give Undertaker's first loss to, just in my humble opinion. 
You don't think it would do anything for the persona that is Batista to have no, a win, a WrestleMania but, win over Batista, the Undertaker? Batista's persona is going to be where it is. He's not going to be in the business that much longer. The guy's already over 40 years old. No, no, no. He's about 35. Whatever. He's over 40 years much old. Much younger than the Undertaker. <sighs> you don't give this to Batista. You just don't. Who do you give it to? You give it to a younger talent. You should have gave it like? to Orton. Possibly. That's where it should have went. Possibly. Uh, I, for one, think it's the way to go. I mean, The Undertaker's got to lose his streak eventually, and um, I don't think we can no, wait. No, he doesn't have to lose it. I think he does. Okay. He doesn't have Goldberg to. Goldberg finally got pinned, right? Well, that was Samoa Joe of, finally got that's beat, That's a different right? type of streak. Umaga hasn't been beat. Umaga! He has not, but I'm sure come New Year's Revolution sure he will beat be. the hell out of Jeff Hardy. Thank you, Umaga. Who's the Intercontinental Champion of the World as we speak right now? As we speak right now, who's the Intercontinental Champion? Jeff Hardy. Thank you. Cena, the WWE Champion, at least slated to be so through WrestleMania 23. His opponent, now I hope you're sitting down at home while you're watching this, because this is going to come as a huge surprise, completely from left field, who John Cena's opponent may be at Mickey WrestleMania, James. but it is none other than Triple H. Triple H, Cena, 2 at WrestleMania 23 is one of the rumored matchups. Now, there's talk of throwing Orton into that game as well. Um, but no. how do you get there, Media? Oh. With the DX run that is strong, no oh. matter whether you like it or not, it is oh. strong. Shawn Michaels teaming up with, um, with a Triple H. Mm -hmm. And John Cena, the champion, you know, there's a reason that there's this random, all of a sudden, Umaga feud. Which I don't think is a bad thing, but no, I think it's, a trans, it's, it's and the reason Umaga's put in there <clears throat> is Cena and Umaga are boys. I mean, it's, they they get along. I mean, they've you can see there do they ride a, together? Probably. There was a a video that was linked on our forum uh, many months ago, but it was basically Kenny from the Spirit Who? Squad. Kenny from the Spirit formerly Squad. of the Spini, uh, Spirit Squad. Kenny from the Spirit Squad. Formerly I still got that the... eyelash in there. Kenny from the Spirit formerly Squad. Formerly of the Spirit Squad. We can go for 35 minutes if you like. Kenny from the Spirit Squad. Formerly. He, for you guys, I'll stop. He was getting uh, his entrance into the business. Uh, chops from Umaga while Cena held him down. The, they're boys. I mean, they get along. And you, you can tell that Armando Alejandro Estrada and Cena and, you know, uh, Umaga, I'll get along. And Ken Doan is you know, another one of those guys. They're all OVW guys, and they all were in the company at one time together. The prototype this was John Cena's yes, it was. gimmick he in was uh, caught OVW. Too. Um, who goes heel? If it is Cena, Triple H. Again, no the question, one. how do you get no there? One. Do you think a face versus face between Cena and Triple H will go over at WrestleMania 23 when you look at Batista and Undertaker potentially mm -hmm. being on the other side of the card? Face Triple versus H face? is uh, married to the business. What does that mean? That means he's going to get whatever he wants. Maybe we can see him excommunicate Shawn Michaels from Degeneration X again. Oh, that would have to be the Raw after WrestleMania. Yes, it would. Immediately following. Yes, it would. Um, I don't think face versus face would work in that scenario. No, nope, uh, not I, twice either. We saw it last year. However, remember how great it was last year. It was the match everyone thought Triple H was going to go in and mow Cena over in. Triple H sold that whole uh, angle leading up to the match. And then Cena wins, keeps the title for quite a while. Triple H, um, no longer the king of kings. So I think there's potential. I think it can certainly be sold and to be done. But I think somebody's got to go heel. Oh. And it certainly ain't Cena. Neither of those matches for me. But Please, remember, we would have sat here in 96 and said certainly it won't be Hogan. We would have sat here in 2001 and said certainly it won't be Steve Austin. Yeah. So. Even though I certainly said it would be Angle in TNA. So, you know, we, we hit once in a while. Speaking of TNA, <laughs> Samoa Joe <laughs> like the way is there. injured, apparently suffering an injury at this past week's TNA tapings down in Orlando, Florida. The extent of the injury is unknown, but it is some type of ankle injury. Was it from the ankle lock? Could have been. Diamond Dallas Page. I've heard of him. And it is that move right there which has brought him to court. Yes, it has. And I, it's because there's another individual that likes to steal this move. He sells and a lot of vodka. He also likes to sell his own clothing. And he also likes to make rap videos after he retired just four years ago. His name is Jay-Z. Diamond Dallas Page takes Jay-Z to court for that very move. The diamond cutter jester saying that Jay-Z has stolen his gimmick. Uh, it's copyright infringement. And because... If Jay-Z just did this in, like, a video or Jay-Z did this, you know, on TV once in a while, that'd be one thing. He's merchandising stuff with this logo in it. 
Diamond Dallas Page a legitimate claim to that title, and uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens in that yeah, scenario. Yeah, a very legitimate claim because he also had that copyrated as well. A back smart in the man. Mid Nineties before smart Jay Z man. blew up at all. So I would expect that you would see not Jay Z stop using it, but DDP get a payday based on that murder. Why wouldn't you? Just say okay, fine, give me ten percent of whatever you're making. Yeah, ten percent on no the merchandise of that. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, Jay Z will do it. We talked last week about TNA looking to expand their pay-per-view location options, Chicago being one of the prime candidates for that. Now it's rumored that Detroit and St. Louis are also uh, in the top running, Chicago still being the top billing simply because of, as you saw in Turning Point this past weekend, the angle that they're doing with Major League Baseball with A.J. Przinsky of the White Sox and uh, all also, the publicity they got off yeah, of that. Also, Detroit have... Uh, has run TNA shows already. They've run sure. pay-per-views already. So, I mean, it's not like they've, you know, never been there before. It's it's an easy city to do. As we speak this weekend, as a matter of fact, UWF teaming with TNA, running shows, uh, house shows for TNA this weekend. There's the $1 million open challenge. Hmm. VKM has challenged Shawn Michaels and Triple H no, to a street they fight. They challenged Paul Levesque. And Michael Hickenbottom. To a street fight if they show up, just show up, don't have to win or lose, $1 million is paid to the, the uh, Degeneration X. And um, WWE is rumored to have sent several cease and desist letters to TNA, as you heard on the Turning Point pay-per-view with those very well-done masks of uh, BG James and, and Kip James. God, I hate that name. Uh, mimicking but Shawn Michaels you know what? and Triple you H. You like this angle. You may hate that name, but you like this angle. I think the angle has some heat to it. I think that uh, I, I, I know that I was Make wrong in initially stop. saying. Make it stop. I was wrong in initially saying that the, this was a direction they shouldn't travel in. I think that TNA in general should be more focused on putting over their action as opposed to challenging WWE because I don't think they will ever win that battle. But at the same time, this is stuff, you know, with D, the, the old DX, the new, the new Age Outlaws, is saying that this is, you know, old, played stuff from eight years ago that nobody wants to see. But how many times, remember when they came in the ring and mimicked the uh, Nation of Domination? Mm -hmm. And how many wore the masks angles, many, and all that? They many, did the same thing on TNA, yet angles? saying that the people they're mocking are old. How many different angles have we seen do that? Um, the little uh, vertically challenged individual. that Bret Hart? Oh, I mean, that's done, been done. So Michael Michaels 15. brought Bret Hart back to Raw? Yeah, exactly. And he was a little, I mean, that's been done. Jericho did it with Booker T. I mean, you know, all these guys did it with That's him. King Booker. Booker T. Did you happen to catch the Armageddon press conference this past week on WWE.com? I tell you, folks, the gimmicks don't get any better than that that is King Booker. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Wrestling Society X. There's been a lot of questions about this new wrestling organization being put on by MTV, Music Television. Out in Los Angeles, they had their pilot taping back in February and taped their first series of shows November, uh, mid-November of this year. show will be debuting on the MTV Network on January the 30th, and we'll go head-to-head -head with ECW on Sci-Fi. Outstanding. Some of the talent that is participating in that organization. <laughs> Can we say it? We can. Can we say it? The person heading the booking of the wrestling uh, for the event is none other than a man who's appeared on this very program. Vampiro! 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 Good God Almighty, back on wrestling. Vampiro! A couple of unique things about the organization. They did not allow, allow any blows to the head with foreign objects. Huh? However, they had an exploding casket match. Huh? Doesn't make much sense. It will be music. It will be wrestling. <laughs> Somewhat of what Heat was supposed to be. Remember when Heat was on MTV and it was supposed to be this hybrid show, music and wrestling, when IMTV taking it on their own to do yeah, this MTV initiative. Yeah, MTV destroyed that show. Heat? Oh, they made you know, it Heat, awful. You know, Heat used to be a great show. Back in the day when there was no SmackDown. Heat was a great show. That was, you know, Heat was the show in which Vince McMahon came out and talked to Kane and The Undertaker and said, You two are nothing more than two... Putrid beep. on Sunday night at 6 p.m. He was a great show because when there was no uh, SmackDown, Heat was the number two show. And if it was a pay per view Sunday, Heat was the it's show of things that were happening. Mm -hmm. uh, WWE.com is rumored to be relaunching soon, focusing on more online exclusive video content with videos that will go anywhere from one minute to about 20 minutes. And, uh, Does that mean we're going to see Tim White again? The potential is that it will expand from just a professional wrestling site and be a global entertainment site. Trying to copy our stuff again, Damien. 
The tag team situation in WWE is another news and view worth uh, another news item rather worth discussing. As you saw after the ECW pay per view, didn't see much of the Hardy Boys or Eminem. That's too bad too because you know what it looks like on Raw they're actually trying to bring in more teams. They have more teams in the mix. You need to put the heart. If you're going to do tag team wrestling, you're only going to be able to do it on one brand. Seriously, I mean you know put all the teams on one brand, dump the other tag team belts and have all the teams be able to mix it up. I mean, you've got Crime Time, you've got the Highlanders, you've got the Hardy Boys with a Z. You, have you got DX? Because that makes them tough. Yeah. Um, the status is unknown of those two teams. What we think will happen and what we're told will happen is Matt Hardy will return to his SmackDown kingdom. Of Again, King without Booker, explanation. And the uh, jo Joey Mercury may go to ECW, actually. Well, they, they're paying them. I mean, they brought them in for two weeks. they got to use them. Last week, WWE Raw scores a 3.8 rating. Still solid ratings, especially going up against the now new number one program on cable each and every week, which is Monday Night Football. And SmackDown scores a still strong 2.6 rating, leading it to uh, one of the top shows on Friday nights, especially in the key demographics of young males. That's unfortunate, too, because WWE owned Monday nights. And, and in general, wrestling owned Monday nights and cable Monday nights. And now that football got booted off of the big networks and got sent down to cable. Did you happen to catch on WWE.com the video, the kiss cam, if you will, with, big, with, with Vito, who's also been on this very program, and Michael Cole did and not, JVO? Did not catch that one either. I'm slacking in my duties. I'm, I apologize. I'm looking up old WCW sites. <laughs> That's honestly what I'm doing. WCW.com. Damn, it goes to WWE. They're all closed, right? <sighs> They're redirected back to WWE. <laughs> <laughs> I went out and I bought my competition. You know what was the worst WCW site ever? The one that WWE ran. I hated that site. Let's go to the Fan of the Week, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, two weeks into this new initiative on the show, Fan of the Week. This week, it comes from Calgary. Alberta, Alberta Canada. Canada, and the oh, uh, viewer's name is Matt Tom. Here's the email he sent us. Hey, guys, my name's Matthew Tom. I hail from Calgary. Dramatic pause. Alberta, Canada. I Do you find Bret Hart to be a Canadian hero, being from Calgary? Let me Alberta, ask you Canada? this, too. Do you have fun doing that all the time? Where are you from? I'm from Calgary. Now nah, you wait. Canada. I would do that. I love your show and just want to say keep on keeping on, which we will. CM Punk is my all-time favorite wrestler. His ROH, which was Ring of Honor, just blew my mind away when I saw his matches with Samoa Joe, Brian Danielson, who's an amazing individual, and pretty much anyone he wrestled. I was just wondering your theory as to why he is so popular in ECW, and do you guys think his Ring of Honor work has anything to do with it? Thanks again, Matt Tom, our fan a, of the week. I think it's got a good deal to do with it. I think CM Punk had a cult following before he even debuted. You know, we were very privileged to be able to see CM Punk back before he was in ECW and even, Ring, even, of even Honor, Ring of Honor as he was participating exactly. in independent shows here and where we're based out of in the Milwaukee area. And, you know, he always had something special, did CM Punk, and you could always see that one day he was going to be big time. Now he is. I think his appeal is universal. I think that he defines what ECW was and defines what today's fan is, which is why I think that he's very popular with the mainstream wrestling fans. Yeah, you know, you, you hit it right on the head. Uh, CM Punk seems to be a wrestling fan that gets to be a wrestler. That's really how it feels. Thank you very much, Matt Tom, our fan of the week. You can become the fan of the week. Just send us an email message, which, as you see on Mondays, email Mondays, um, we get dozens upon dozens upon dozens of emails each week. You can be fan of the week. Just send your email to mail at pwrshow.com. Now it's time for the hits and misses of the week. Let's start with the hits. The first hit, I think, was TNA Turning Point, a solid, phenomenal pay-per-view effort. Samoa Joe gets the victory over Kurt Angle in their second matchup. We are certain to be seeing a third matchup come from those two individuals. Don't know if it's going to happen at the next pay-per-view offering. Would anybody care if there was a third one, if Angle won again? No. Thank you. No. Now you've got the rubber match. <laughs> Uh, number two is the official. Did you ever see, I got to stop you. Did you ever see Skin Deep? Is that a film we should be talking about here yes. on Worldwide Television? Starring, starring John Ritter. Oh, I have not okay. seen that. They had a rubber match in there as well, battling rubbers. 
the official announcement of the reunification of the world's greatest tag team, Shelton Benjamin and Charlie Haas. Did you know that uh, Charlie Haas is black? Actually, uh, I understand the 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 the, um, the what are they? The Islanders? What are their names? Highlanders. The Highlanders. They are a bit confused at times. Mm -hmm. And I think what they meant was Shelton Benjamin is black. Mm. Did you know he was black? It reminds me of the commitments. I'm black in a period. The third hit of this week, I think, was the Armageddon press conference, which I alluded to earlier, which can be viewed on www.com. We saw Josh Matthews, who is still alive. And uh, the it was just, you could tell that Finley, Batista, and uh, King Booker and Charmel were just having a grand old time at that press conference. And it was really... Um, it was really enjoyable to see them all interacting with each other and at the same time pushing a pay-per-view which is coming up this weekend from WWE which is what the 13th pay-per-view this month from professional wrestling but be that as it may those are the three hits of the week now let's go to the misses things that didn't quite get Chef Hardy where they needed in to go. wrestling Matt Hardy in wrestling and anybody else you like after coming off the heels of the disappointing ECW to dismember to dismember pay-per-view December to December pay-per-view. ECW on Sci-Fi is absent on Tuesday night, moving to Saturday for one week only, causing a lot of people to wonder, where is my ECW or where is their ECW? Or causing them to wonder, my God, that pay-per-view was so awful, they just canceled the program. Timing could have been worse for that, a miss in my opinion. Next miss is um, hmm. John Cena on SmackDown. Again, when you have three distinctly different brands you don't need to panic and take your most popular champion being john cena and pepper the smackdown pay-per-view with him it continues to make smackdown look like the inferior product and smackdown is always going to be the inferior product because i mean when big names that haven't been around the business in a while show up they don't show up on smackdown they show up on raw like when rock's going to pop back up again where is he going to go for well, raw's live so of course i understand that but that's why it's always going to be that if you want to make it, make SmackDown Live. That is true. That's your hits and misses for this week, ladies and gentlemen. Now let's wrap things up a little. Talk to you about some show updates, some information that you can uh, gather by going to pwrshow.com, which, again, is experiencing tremendous growth thanks to you and spreading the word to your wrestling buddies about this particular program. But you can also now join us in the chat room. We have a chat room that is open during wrestling programming. So during Raw, SmackDown, TNA, ECW, and wrestling pay-per-views, come on into the chat room, chat about it to your friends. If you're in a different time zone, find out what's going to happen. If you don't want to find out what's going to happen, don't come to the chat room if it's not on in your area yet. And uh, you can join one of us in the chat room as well as we talk about the program that is currently on the air. We had a great, a lot of great fun this past week for Raw uh, with uh, several members of the viewing community in the chat room along with myself. So uh, make sure you keep tuning in and you can go right on over to the chat now link on PWRShow.com. Also, there are new positions available with this very program. If you want to get in the wrestling business, if you will, and uh, contribute your writing skills to the pwrshow.com website. You can find information on the front page of pwrshow.com of how you can become a member of this elite team. A lot of you have spoken out about wanting to get the Pro Wrestling Report in a television market in your area. Well, several campaigns are up and available for more uh, interaction on your part on pwrshow.com. Visit, check it out on the front page. Do your part, send feedback to the stations that uh, will give us the most global dominance, if you will which is a station over in the U.K. called the Wrestling Channel. Go I've figure. Heard I've, heard, I've heard of it. In Canada, we've got the Fight Network, and here in the United States, the former Outdoor Life Network, now known as the Versus Network. Folks, give us a hand, hop on over to the website, and um, do what you need to do to get your PWR. The newsletter is also available on PWRShow.com. Sign up, get monthly updates, no spam, because we don't do that and uh, get monthly exclusive updates along with exclusive videos from pwrshow.com. Sign up for the newsletter, click on the link, and it'll take you right to the sign-up page for the newsletter. So sign up now. Head on over and sign up now. Again, Meathead, we started the show talking about the event that was this past Friday and Saturday night, Blizzard Brawl 2006. Phenomenal. Uh, we had the opportunity to talk to a number of legendary stars in the business, and actually, you and I had the opportunity to provide play-by-play -play and color commentary. Who did what? Don't know. Um, on that particular show. But it was a it great show. Matter. And again, over 1,900 fans wow. uh, over the weekend were exposed uh, to Blizzard Brawl. 
So great job, all of you here in uh, our television market of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, for coming out for that show. Special thanks, of course, go out to The Brew, 97.3 FM, Time Warner Cable, and um, Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, as the show was actually benefiting that charity. Bobby the Brain Heenan, Sensational Sherry Martell, Demolition Axe, Kamala the Ugandan Giant, King Kong Bundy, Doink the Clown, Lance Allen from today's TMJ4. Mm. It was Who's a still, superstar still, started affair. still alive. I, I, I thought they killed him. I thought Doink killed him. Again, exclusive videos will be available soon uh, right here on PWRShow.com. Meathead, that was a show. Wow, and you even wrapped it up real nice. Just like in Skin Deep. Again, it was the, the battling. One had like a blue glow-in-the-dark one, and one had a red one. And Thank you for battling. tuning in this week, ladies and gentlemen, of the Pro Wrestling Report and TV in Milwaukee. Stay tuned as we have more content coming for you on the World Wide Web. We'll see you on PWR Daily for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, next week, I see it just keeps, it's like the song that doesn't end, that woman with the puppets. This is the song that never ends. Yes, it goes on and on, my friends. Bye. Some people, we'll see you next week, ladies and gentlemen, right here on the Pro Wrestling Report. Thanks for tuning in.